Since 1976, hearts have been to hell and back. Relegation to the first division for the first time was followed by the rockiest period in the club's proud history, when a permanent place in the Premier League seemed an unattainable dream and bankruptcy a very real nightmare. But a takeover by Wallace Mercer and the appointment of Scotland's first senior player manager heralded a new era in which hearts stamped on hooliganism, multiplied crowds, brushed shoulders with the league title and beat the very best in Europe. Away up in Gorgi at Tang Castle Park There's a wee fit for team that I makes its mark They've won all the honours in footballing art There's no other team to compare with a heart It's you, yeah, I'll be yes If you can't spell it then here's what it says The story of Hart's decline goes back to spring 1977 when defeat by Rangers would book a place in the first division. Hart's down 2-0 and now almost certainly bound for first division football relegation for the first time in their history. For Scythe, McLean, Jardin, touch back to him, oh. the referee is giving the penalty. And Jardin, think, I think hot a bit there, is leaving it. No, he's going to take it himself. And scoring easily. Splendidly taken penalty, quick chance, didn't even move. It's Hart's throw, Clooney, Gibson, inside to Prentice, Busby. Busby has a clear look at goal and scores! With Sandy Jardin, ironically, the architect of that 3-1 win, Hearts could only pray for a miracle. But there was no divine intervention, and Hearts were relegated after 103 years among football's elite. There was great despondency among supporters, and as expected, manager John Haggard resigned. The Tynecastle club prized Willie Ormond away from his post as Scotland manager to accept the vacant chair, and as Hearts made an assault on the First Division Championship, the results came good. Donald Park scores. Seven minutes gone in the second half. Hearts lead at 1 0. Tierney coming through with Gibson. Park out in front to Gibson, a goal. Beautiful goal, 2 0. Victory over our broth on the last day of the season clinched promotion by just one point, although Morton took the title and goal difference. Hearts were back in the Premier Division, having been helped there by a bright new prospect who would later become club captain. For Walter Kidd, it was the start of a colourful career. Uh, well, it was, yes. I mean, I was playing junior at the time. I was actually signed on a provisional form with Celtic, which meant I just trained there once a week. And at the end of the season junior, I was freed by Celtic. They just let me go. And about three weeks later, Will Armour came along and asked me to sign full time. I was delighted. Life in the Premier proved tough from the first game in August 1978. And by the first Edinburgh derby, Hearts were desperate for points. Donald doesn't control it. Donald Park will score. Donald Park puts Hearts one up. Nine minutes. So a free kick to Hibbs. O'Brien will take it. And we're moving up to the 90th minute of an extraordinary match. It's a goal! 91 and a half minutes. Ali McLeod ends a fantastic match by making it 1-1. Crowd problems beset the Derby fixture, leaving Hearts in deep trouble with the SFA. Ultimately, a perimeter barrier was ordered to ring the terracing. But there were encouraging moments, like one notable victory at Pitondry. Busby. And it's gone! A dream debut for Derek O'Connor. 
Robertson trying desperately to keep that in play. He only succeeds in teeing it up for Dom Sullivan. Right foot cross. Looking for Harper. Brown on his back. Yes, penalty kick. One inch. Quaid. Shot. What a goal. A typical Dennis McQuaid goal. By January, however, the fans were shocked by the transfer of a great favourite, Eamon Bannon, to Chelsea. Many people have asked me since then whether I, I wanted to leave the club and I've always answered honestly and truthfully I didn't. It just came completely out of the blue and I was perfectly happy at that time. Um, and that was a measure of how desperate the club was for cash at the time. But despite the financial problems, it had looked as if Hearts could stay in the Premier Division after some encouraging results. When Rangers visited Tynecastle in February 1979, Hearts looked safe for two points. Defensive work by Craig. Hearts moving, Robertson drifting left, looking for a good ball and getting it. Brown coming in, uh, up in support, Robertson drifting in, tries a right foot shot and it's there. And there Craig can knock that into the box with those long throws, finds Busby. Busby hooks it across down to Fraser. Fraser's got a free shot. They're deflected. Appeals for hands and driven in by... G yes, it's a goal. O'Connor scores. Hearts two up, 16 minutes gone. This is Smith. Go for to McDonald. Good ball. McDonald through the gap. Lovely move. Chance for Smith. On a brilliant goal, Cooper McDonald Smith, 2-1. 21 minutes played and Rangers are back in the match. The scythe to Cooper, Dawson coming up on the outside. Lovely flick from Cooper to Dawson. Dawson showing nice control, edge of the box to McDonald. The one two's on, brilliant chance and a goal. Parlene scores. Fraser to take it. And it's there. It's in the net. O'Connor's second, Hart's third. Beautifully fighted corner. And Hart's break the second half deadlock. Fraser flighted that beautifully. O'Connor rose above everyone else. And his header soared into the net. Beautifully made and superbly taken goal. Hearts 3, Rangers 2, 26 minutes gone in the second half. The following match at Easter Road, another valuable point was taken towards winning the battle against relegation, despite an early setback. Early ball flicked forward, Campbell going in, and it's a goal. A little bit of gamesmanship. Ball moving off the spot. George Stewart trying to indicate that the ball wasn't properly spotted, and I don't think that'll have done Willie Gibson any good, however legitimate the complaint was. So here comes Gibson. 1 1. Willie Gibson's 100th goal for Hearts, but almost the last moment of cheer for Tynecastle supporters that year. A dreadful run of 10 consecutive defeats ensured that Hearts were plunged right back into the first division. Despite leading the title chase, Hearts were failing to impress, and as attendances continued to slump, the new board, with Archie Martin and Ian Watt joining the directors, decided to sack Ormond, the former Hibs player, who had never been embraced by Tynecastle fans. With Bobby Moncur in charge, Hearts lost only two matches between January and May to clinch the flag on the final day. Moncur realised the need for experience if his side were to stay in the top division and signed Alex McDonald from Rangers. His faith was well founded. McDonald. Shields with a free kick. McAdams header out. Denny playing it over the advancing wall and uh, catching Con onside. The chance for Hearts. McDonald scores for Hearts. What a start to the match for Alec McDonald. Look at the joy on his face. In that stage of my career at Ibrox, I was in the reserves. So um, when I got the choice to come through to Tain Castle from um, Bobby Monker, and um, it was a great thing. Like, to see, you know, Tain Castle's got the same tradition as Ibrox. And um, 
Always as a player when I came here, you had the same feeling for the place, you know, and it was always nice to come to you. It was always very friendly. So it wasn't any any problem at all. McDonald. Pops playing these balls from midfield very early to give the forwards a chance to move. This is McDonald again. Well, that would have been one of the goals of the season. There's a few times that um, Bobby Monker had had me in the office. Um, they were trying to give me the captain's job, but I felt that I was just here and... Um, I had to gain a respect to the players before I took over the captaincy and um, so we had a few arguments and you know he tried to encourage me to take it over but um, eventually when I got to know the players then I decided that you know I'd be delighted, it'd be a great honour for me. Alec McDonald, a stable new influence in the team, was able to pass his experience on to the emerging talent of youngsters like Gary Mackay and the new signing John Robertson. And once again Pat Bonner came and was beaten. To begin with, obviously, it was a very difficult time for the club, I signed in 81, and uh, it was a kind of situation when you came in and you had one set of training gear, and if it got dirty or if it got wet, then it was your own devices kind of thing. But even the combined efforts of youth and experience couldn't prevent Hearts tumbling back down to the first division, having lost 24 out of 36 matches. To avoid the death of Hearts, the Tynecastle board put the club up for sale. That move sparked off an enormous two-man power struggle. Kenny Walk, who at that time was a very successful Edinburgh bookmaker and a well-known hip supporter, put a cheque on the table which the directors were thinking of cashing to buy all the equity that was available in the, in, in the share issue. And I was down in London that weekend and uh, going to the Scotland-England International on a Saturday. And Donald Ford, an, a famous ex-internationalist for Hearts, rang me and said, Luke Wallace, for God's sake, we need at least someone to create some competition here. So I went to Wembley that day and I loved the match and I saw the enjoyment that the supporters had and I had. Scotland won as well. It was at Trafalgar Square that night. It was great fun. So I rang the club chairman on the Sunday morning and said, look, I'm in as well. Whatever Kenny Walk can offer, I will commit myself to that as well. And I then told my wife and I arrived back at lunchtime in Edinburgh. And that really started a saga of 10 days of barnstorming where the whole thing took off and I was interviewed by the board and we had to really try and politicize the thing and I had public meetings. And within 10 days, I'd bought into a public company. Uh, it had cost me half a million pounds and I won the vote 3-2. And I, honestly, I, it was, it was it, it, a nightmare and a dream come true. For Mercer, the new king of hearts, the nightmare had to be tolerated before the dream could be realized. First, Archie Martin was sacked and the vacant chairman's seat was given to 67-year-old Alex Naylor. Then, having tried to live in peace in Tynecastle, manager Bobby Moncur resigned after failing to see eye to eye with the new owner. And while Tony Ford was made manager, the search was on for a big name with a track record. Tony was never going to be the manager. That was just a soft option at the time. Jim McLean was going to be our manager. Big Jock had come up to see me and I'd offered Jock the opportunity. He was at Leicester City. Jock, of course, had been a coach here. But in all honesty, Jock think, didn't think we could afford him. So he rang me and he said, I'll see you on the highways and byways, son. So we put the phone down and McLean was then my preferred option. And Jim thought about it long and hard because it was a big club. And in fact, Jim and I actually did some business over that time, which got me into a lot of trouble subsequently. I bought Pettigrew and Addison. And that was one of the fundamental mistakes. It was quite funny. The first day that Pettigrew and Addison played for the Hearts, we already, I'd already spent half a million buying players. We spent another 300,000, which we didn't have, to, to, and it was all in tick. And the guy was standing in the closure, and he looked up at me, and he looked me straight in the eye, and he said, Mercer, he said, that's the best you can do with the money. The sooner you're bankrupt and you move out here, the better. And I suddenly realized that really, in the end, the supporters couldn't care a toss who the chairman is, the directors. They want players and players that they can support. And that was my rude awakening to the realities of being a major shareholder in a football club. There was uh, people arriving at the door uh, asking for money, uh, not being paid the money basically because we didn't have the money. And uh, it was bad times really. Now also there was the decision between whether the physio stayed or the coach yourself. Yeah. Uh, did you think you were almost out of a job? It looked like that at one stage. Obviously uh, everybody was cut, the staff was cut in the uh, promotion side and the secretarial side. Uh, right down to the bone, it came down to uh, the physiotherapist or myself, I think, and uh, I was a younger man, so I stayed. <laughs> I mean, I was riding the whole thing right to the edge, 
because it was already on the edge when I took the thing over. I mean, it's like looking at a cancer patient. You've got to take the knife out. You've got to be brutal. And I went back to my roots. You wind the income up. You reduce the overheads. It was a sick patient. My house on the line. My house only came off the line uh, 12 months ago. My family home was all secured in the debt. I mean, I, I wasn't playing games. This was serious stuff. And uh, we really had to go for it. And we missed promotion that year by one point. And we had riots in the terracing, policemen getting dragged out of the crowd, 15,000 people. And it was the best thing that ever happened to us. But at that time, I really thought, oof, I thought, what the hell have I done now? With financial problems yeah. mounting off the park, Hearts had gone to Rugby Park on the second last day of the season, needing victory to aid promotion hopes. With Alex McDonald, now the player manager, suspended, along with key players, two 18-year-olds, Gary Mackay and Dave Bowman, played. But it was a day of frustration all round. Hamill on the left. Oh, Pettigrew. Bowman towards Pettigrew. He's getting away there from Armstrong, and that'll be a penalty kick, perhaps. Well, no, the referee is giving that outside the box. The half players cannot believe it. The uh, decision argued against by a lot of Hearts supporters. Hamill swerving it in, but that's no problem at all for Alan McCullough. It's so all very sad sight again. Some trouble among the crowd on the far side. It's populated mostly by Hearts supporters. We've already seen several spectators removed from the terraces, and I think we may see some more. After that goalless draw, defeat by Motherwell on the last day of the season ensured that Hart stayed down for the first time ever. Wallace Mercer had to appeal to rioting fans for calm, but knew himself where the problem lay. The fans were angry, not angry with the players, they were angry that their team had not got promoted and missed by one point. And that spilled over. And that strength of feeling has always stayed with me. Because in the end, that was the, that was the, the thing I didn't have in the balance sheet. It appeared a disaster at the time, but not having to readjust to the Premier Division allowed Macdonald and Mercer to regroup. With little money to spend, they brought in old troopers. When I left Rangers, I thought I could play till probably 35. And, uh, well, I went on to play till I was 39, so I definitely got a, a new lease of life when I, when I did, did join the Hearts. But there was a bit of a shock waiting for you in terms of conditions and the poverty of the club, basically. Yes, well... Uh, I knew that the Hearts had, uh, well, because I, I lived in Edinburgh and still followed the Hearts to a certain extent, uh, I knew that they, they were on hard times. But when I left Rangers, there was a lot of things that I took for granted. You know, like training kit, good boots, uh, just the standard of dressing rooms, everything like that. The basic way you travelled, everything like that. It was a big time club. Uh, money was no object. Uh, when I went to the Hearts, it was, uh, to say the least, it was a bit dilapidated. Uh, Everything, uh, the training gear was very substandard. You could only get cheap boots, everything like that. So it was quite a cultural shock, basically, when, uh, when I went and joined the Hearts. The manager went and bought the likes of Jimmy Bones, Stuart McLaren, Willie Johnson, a lot of seasoned campaigners, respected professionals, and we, we operated with a sort of over 30s and under 20s thing where we didn't have anybody in the middle. And it worked because all the young boys did the, the legwork for the older pros who had the brains behind the operations. One stage you were called dads, aren't we? And, uh, but the players that we brought in were good pros. They were, uh, and what we managed to do was that with our experience of training ourselves, because we were quite elder elderly as well, uh, we managed to curtail their training and train them at the right way and so that they, they had an age for the Saturday. And everybody like that did a tremendous job for the Hearts. Jimmy Bowen, Sandy Jarden, Alec McDonald, uh, myself, Donald Park, we'd done the training for 20 years, or 15, 16 years, and we had it. But we were coming to the end, the young boys were still building up their stamina, and uh, they used to laugh, but it worked. They gave you a fair old bit of stick then, eh? Oh, Grandad, I think it was Grandad I got called. <laughs> Bob Geldof, didn't like Mondays. <laughs> But Dad's army were not to be laughed at, as their opponents discovered. Johnson's corner kick. There's Ronnie McDonald, and he got it again. Must be this time, yes. Another corner kick. McDonald goes after it. Well, there's a deflection. It's in. Oh, very neatly on indeed. 
kid on the far side. This is going to be a good one. The corner tries to get there. Yes! Pettigrew. Two on. Pettigrew, beautiful touch on Boon. Can't get there. Here's Mackay. Will he get his shot? And he does. Yes! Called in by corner. I think the full sense of players realize it's well nigh over. Pettigrew racing after it. Willie Johnson on the wing and given inside to Mackay. That's a good ball by Mackay. Bowman. Yes. Oh, he took that so well. 4-1. Pressure still on. Jordan. Oh, a lovely little dummy. This is a good move. Oh, brilliant move. Can he be put it away? Yes! Burn finishes it. We're in the first division and we're going to places like uh, Dumbarton and Alloa and places like that. And I kept saying, uh, you don't want to come back here. Nothing against Alloa or Dumbarton, but you don't want to come back to grounds like this. You want to go to your Ibrox, your Parkhead, your Aberdeens. And we started believing in ourselves then. That belief lifted Hearts back into the Premier Division, having run St Johnston a close second for the title. I did a deal with the manager the day we got promoted. I said, Alec, you never got a testimonial at Rangers Football Club and you were there for 12, 15 years. I said, if you keep me up and you'll be the first Hearts manager to keep Hearts up in the Premier Division, having been promoted and not gone down again, I'll give you a testimonial match. And that was a private deal between the chairman and the manager because if he looked after my neck, I would look after his back pocket. It was as basic and as crude as that. And the first game of the season, when we were promoted, we beat St. Johnson at Muirton Park. We then went on to get fifth place in the league. They went through the floor and got relegated to the second division. And big Roddy McDonald scored the goal with me. The goal for me, two minutes to go. And it's in the turn of these coins, sometimes, that a season can take off. And the atmosphere in that bus, having won our first game in the Premier Division in two points, I'd never been in the Premier Division before, it was great. And we went for it. And that season we got into Europe. It was unbelievable. Jordan's free kick. Donald once again winning it. That was a vital touch from Abercrombie, playing it away from Park. McDonald's still in the box. And Roddy McDonald puts hearts into the lead. Now mixed day to Melrose. McGarvey trying to control it in turn. And that is absolutely magnificent. Kid goes on the run forward. Here's Alec McDonald. Bowen is onside. And that's the equaliser. The Celtic defence was cut out. Jimmy Bowen brings Hart right back into the match. And the Hart supporters celebrate. Evan, about as impressive as anybody in the field today, Evan, now Ralph Callaghan, at Serban with a touch and there's a goal, Bobby Thompson, Park, that's Robertson, Park again, better ball inside, Mackay to Robertson, well there's a curl in that is in, there's deflection I think, what each, John Robertson, the man who seemed most likely to succeed, and he has, to the delight of the hard support. Redford. Fritz, beautiful little dummy. Cooper, in very good position. Tries to swill it round, there's a chance to send. Ali McCoy's 1-0. There's a beautiful ball from Russell. Cooper. Gregor Stevens is with him and there's a touch there. Russell. Brilliantly done and that's it. Two nothing Bobby Williamson. Here's Johnson. Two minutes left. Uh, will he let fly? He does and that's a goal, yes. Derek O'Connor pulling up. We've 
gone. A full minute of injury time. Congested area indeed in this. It's in. It's the equaliser. Brilliantly by Robertson. A minute of injury time gone. And one of the best strikers in the game, young John Robertson, equalises the score superbly. The header from Melrose. Here's John Cahoon. Barnes going through. Tommy Barnes, a great chance for Celtic. And Celtic take the lead. Free kick leaves it to Johnston. Marvellous goal. And how Johnston enjoyed it. I think at the time it was a it was like a party to us to a certain extent. You know, we we came up and as usual with the teams coming up from the first division it was oh they'll do reasonable but they'll they'll not have the, the power, they'll not have the strength to stay up, they'll not manage it. And we went out determined to prove that we could do it and we had a very hard pre season with George McNeil and Bert Logan in to give us a real hard going over sprinting wise. And we went out and worked very hard as a team. It was a great atmosphere, a great spirit. We won our first five games and we were sitting top of the league after five matches and nobody could believe it especially anybody at the club that could have dreamed that that kind of start would be achieved. And we just took it from there. We gained respect about the way we played. Some people didn't like it. We were very hard tackling and got the ball forward very quickly. But it worked for us. And to a certain extent, it's, st it's still the same formula that, that makes Hearts the team that they are. It was a big lift for everybody. I mean, we went into the Premier League and uh, we'd never played there before. Uh, and getting there and making sure we got into Europe was fabulous for everybody. It was a, another avenue opening up for the players uh, and it gave everybody a lot of confidence to go ahead and uh, help their careers blossom and that worth doing what we've done that season. Hearts were back where they belonged, challenging for the honours of Scottish football. The crowds were flooding back and over the next season, Hearts were to further establish their staying power. There's George Curry again, Willie Johnston supporting towards Park and a superb opening goal for Hearts eight minutes to half time Gordon Arthur picked it out of the net and he hadn't a hope with that header from Donald Park Ronnie McDonald going straight to the goal line right on the near post it's in turned in by Robertson and the goal which Hearts Threatened so long as arrived at long last. Gillespie made a good run off Roddy McDonald. Good recovery tackle by the Hart centre half. But there's Jim Holmes. Now Robertson, can he turn? Back to Gillespie. Great goal from Jim Gillespie. Put on by Bone. Sullivan was there, that was a hand. No complaints from the big centre half, and a perfect chance for Hearts to get back in level terms. Black against McDermott. Brilliantly well, taken by Black. Hearts are back in terms. One minute into the second half. Flinging, flinging for Holmes. A great move from Morton. The ball's in. Touch on from Bone, finds Johnston. Clark wants it in the middle. Here's John Robertson. And the perfect finish makes it two apiece. He really is so accomplished in that situation with right foot or left. There goes Bone. Mackin in trouble. And Sandy Clark celebrates the first match in Hearts Colours. Very accurate header that from Winnie, Rooney let it run. Allowing Kidd to make the challenge and Sandy Clark is onside, a great chance for Hearts. And there's the opener, brilliantly finished by Sandy Clark. There goes Sandy Clark once again. Delicate touch. And there's the second for Hearts. And it comes to Fitzpatrick. For McDowell. Yeah. That's a one, two, one back. 
Kenny McDowell makes it 2-1 to Hearts and St Myrna right back in the match. So on goes Bowman and Hearts have the corner kick taken by Donald Park. That's on the Ronnie McDonald! Jimmy Bone! 3-1 to Hearts. 25th minute of the second half and Bone opens up the two goal gap once again. Gallagher. The chance now for St Martin. Brilliantly taken by Ian Scanlon. The Kinnan streaker. McMinn making a run to find space. McKinnon's cross. Smith's in trouble. And Mitchell makes it 1-0. Good pass from Bowman, very good again. Sandy Clark's at the far post. There's John Robertson. Turned in by Clark and Hearts are back on level terms. Google hanging in the air for the header. That's Black releasing Weir on the left. This is promising for Aberdeen. Google's waiting. Falls for Simpson. 1 0 to Aberdeen. Neil Simpson. Very strong on the ball again. Black looking for Weir, but Walter Kidd was in good position for Hearts. He's given it away and a great chance for Peter Weir. And that is a disaster for the Hearts captain, Walter Kidd. Dougal challenging. And winning possession. Here's Weir. Now McQueen. Is that a giveaway? No, it's a chance for Hearts. The ball is in, it's Andy Watson who's done it. Oh, Andy Watson, the Hearts player who know what, would relish scoring more than any other this afternoon, scored against his former teammates to make it 2-1. Gary Mackay this time with the corner. And flick on, the chance on the line, the ball is in, and John Robertson has equalised. And Hearts shock Aberdeen once again. With the older players now hanging up their boots, Hearts had survived a transitional season, finishing seventh. But nobody at Tynecastle could anticipate what drama lay ahead in the following year, especially after taking just ten points from their first nine games. This was a rare early victory. Greg Levine, the captain, Roddy McDonald, number five, as the corner comes in. McDonald's header. And the simplest of opening goals for Hearts. The second minute of the match. Roddy McDonald gets his first goal of the season and what a dramatic start for Hearts. Get out by Hegarty, there's Curry lofting it back. Ball on side. John Robertson. 2-0 to Hearts. At the beginning of the season, they, we definitely didn't think we could win the title. We thought we could do well and qualify for Europe again. Uh, one of the big things that uh, when you start winning it builds up momentum, it builds up confidence and one of the things that happened that year was that Scotland were going to play Australia so there was a few games that were cancelled with other clubs because they had players in the, the World Cup squad we were in well the fortunate position that we never had anybody that was supposedly good enough for these squads so uh, we were able to play games every Saturday so we managed to get win these games which eventually put us top of the league and with being top of the league and the momentum we would build up and the confidence we built up we just went from strength to strength although we never we never spoke about it publicly you know the alan mcdonald got to us about christmas and said look we're up top of the league we maybe hit a good patch we maybe lose a couple of games but just keep playing the way you are and we could be there or thereabouts and as the season wore on people began to say well wait a minute you know hearts just might go all the way I mean, it was about probably the end of January that the players got in together with a manager one day and the manager says, look, let's not kid ourselves on any longer. We can win this championship and let's go and do it. And the players, you know, we just didn't speak about it publicly, but we knew we could win it. Clark got his head to the ball, but Durant 
sweeps it into the air for Clark again. Now Black. That's for John Roberts and a great chance for Hearts. The opening goal. Eighth minute of the match and John Robertson makes it 1-0 to Hearts. So here's a moment of danger for the Rangers defence once again with Kenny Black taking the free kick. Up goes Sandy Clark. It hits the post. There's a penalty kick awarded, is there? Oh, what has the referee awarded? It looks like a penalty kick, yes. So it's Robertson against Walker. 2-0 to Hearts. Midway through the second half. Hearts 2, Rangers 0. There's McCoy's in the turn. Creek is a penalty kick, yes. Ollie McCoy got down in the act of shooting. Well taken by McCoy. Rangers are back in the match. The clearance now missed by Monroe. Back to Robertson. The chance for Sandy Clark. Will it go for the third? Yes. Sandy Clark. Makes it 3-1 to Hearts right on the final whistle. I think you're well out the run before you realise it's actually happening. And, uh, you know, the longer it went, then obviously the more pressure that, that you know, was starting to become on us. Uh, the publicity from the media, etc. was really, it was intense at one point. But we coped with it really well. You know, there wasn't, you know, I think at the time it was a right good bunch of guys. We all got on well together. There was no superstars in the team. And I think that helped. There was nobody getting more publicity than, you know, than somebody else in that kept us all together and all in an equal part and I think that was a big plus in that year. Levine. High one again. Robertson with a shot. Oh, what a goal. Oh, a brilliant goal. Oh, I mean, it looked harmless enough initially, but watch his positioning. And how deadly you can be in the finish. Hearts are one up. Nice ball to Berry. He's in a good position. Dolly Thompson. Here's a great chance he scored. 2 nothing. Sandy Clark. It could be a very interesting break. There's no side. This could share it. Robertson must score. He must, yes. Oh. And he's not praying. And that look of triumph in Robertson's face says it all. There was no offside. He did it so coolly. He, he took about half an hour to do it, but he did it. Aberdeen, tremendously patient in the build-up. Willie Miller gets the special treatment from the Hearts fans, the booze and whistles, which I'm sure simply inspire him to greater efforts. Miller doing well for Aberdeen, there's Jim Betts. Played away, appeals for handball, and the referee is coming across to what is the decision. It looks as though it may well be a penalty kick. Yes, a penalty kick has been given. Queen Frank McDougall or Jim Bett in the past, but it's Peter Weir against Henry Smith. It's in the net after a valiant effort from Henry Smith, and Aberdeen are in the lead. Well, I just look at this effort here from Henry Smith. Right into the corner, and Smith appeared to get a handle of the ball. Well, that was a tremendous effort from the goalkeeper. Thumping the ball forward, there's no taker for Aberdeen, and Jordan has lots of time to set up another Hearts attack appeals for offside with a chance and they close up John Cahoon for Hearts and there's the spirit of Hearts for all to see three minutes left to play a long ball forward from Sandy Jordan Aberdeen tried to play an offside trap for John Cahoon and there's the finish but ties it up at one apiece round the side it goes and Cowie's still in possession 
Although he's rather cornered. Oh, and Hearts get out of it well. Good play. Nice touch of confidence. That kind of confidence they could do with in front of goal now. Mackay. They've gone self. He has. One nil. The young midfield player taking his time, measured pace forward, and a superb strike. Exactly when it was needed. Marvellous goal for Hearts. So in May 1986, Hearts travelled to Dens Park needing one solitary point to secure their first league title in 26 years. In the dying minutes of that final match, the flag was within sight. Kid. Runners, good round the outside, and McDonald happy to step in, concede that corner kick. Swinging in and swinging in very dangerously, there's a goal! So agonizing for hearts. Will this championship disappear from the very eyes? Kit. What a marvelous substitution this has been for Dundee and Hearts. Looking slightly ragged. It's a great check. We've done it. Two nothing. A brilliant goal. Well, I didn't know there were seven minutes at the time or what. I knew it was going to be very, very difficult to come back from that. And uh, you were just gone. I mean, uh, I've tasted a lot of highs and a lot of lows in football because that's what football's like, you know, a lot of highs and lows. There's never a straight line. And uh, that's the worst I've ever felt after a football game. It's hard to describe the, the feeling within the camp. I mean, the dressing room, we've had defeats in the past, but nothing like that. To be seven minutes away from the, the major championship was a real blow. And to see actual men lying about crying everywhere, it's... To describe it is unbelievable, really, it was terrible. I felt sorry for the players that I played with who put a lot, a lot of work into it, and for supporters who uh, followed us all the time. And I think Scottish opinion was with us at the time, um, but it was just unfortunate that, that we did lose it, um, as opposed to somebody else winning it. I felt that being a manager, I had to go in and lift them, but, I mean, the place was absolutely dead. So, I, you know, I went to try and gene them up, but I had to go into the toilet. So it took me about three times to actually say something to them, to get them around, and there was a few of them crying in corners and things like that, you know, and it's, it's a very emotional time. It, it, was a, it was a numb feeling, you know, it, it definitely didn't sink home. It sank home to me a lot more after the cup final the following week, but after the league game it was it really was a numb, unbelieving feeling. Early on I get brought down the box and it was an absolutely certain penalty, which we didn't get, which was, you know, that may have changed the whole game. If we got the penalty, we'd go in front. We get at least a draw and, you know, we're league champions. But that's football and that's just the way it is. Even to have got that far and that close in itself was a victory. I'm not accepting failure in itself, but we've got to rationalise what had been achieved. We'd taken this two-bit business that was within days of closure and turned it into a credible fighting force that the rest of Scottish football at least had some respect for. While the bitter disappointment of Dens Park had an effect on the new league campaign, there were plenty of goals to delight the Hearts fans. Away up in Gorgie at Tang Castle Park There's a wee football team that I makes its mark They've won all the honours in footballing art There's no other team to compare with the Hearts
So Hearts finished second once more at the end of season 87-88 and the future looked bright. But a disastrous start to the next league campaign led to the sacking of Sandy Jardin. One man took full responsibility for that decision. I took him on because he was top class. He was also a friend of Alec McDonald's. They'd roomed together at Rangers over the years. He personified everything that was good about Scottish football. He was from Tynecastle High School next door. He used to look at Hart's training in the morning when he was studying his English lessons. He had a pedigree and a background. He was a great player with us for three, four years. He developed Craig Levine. He assisted us in advising us to buy McPherson. And eventually, when I was under threat, he may be tapped to go to Aberdeen or be offered. In the fact, they didn't offer him the job. I made him joint manager with Alec MacDonald. Alec agreed. But at the same time, you know, life never continues on a permanent basis. Last year, I was going into the eye of a storm. We were sitting in the Premier League, having been second top the season before, with eight points out of 11 games. Teams seemed to have lost direction. The atmosphere in the boardroom wasn't right. Uh, there was just a feeling abroad. And in the end, I sat there, I brought, we were lost 3-0. And I said, Wallace, you've got to sort this out. Not anyone else. And I made a decision. And sadly, Sandy accepted the next morning that my decision was that he would go. But there's no one I have the highest respect and regard and care for than Sandy Jordan. And he will always have a permanent place back here after a sensible period of time. His contribution to the cause over the period of time was tremendous. He handled his resignation with dignity. And I have nothing but the highest respect for the man. I came into football, I realised that he, you're going to get the sack one day. That's one thing, if you're a football manager, you know you're going to get the sack. Uh, OK, maybe it happened a wee bit quicker than I, I thought, but I resigned myself, that's it. You're obviously very philosophical about it. No hard feelings? No, no, no hard feelings. Uh, I mean, I still go back to Tyne Castle uh, and watch all the games. I, I still want them to win. I would love them uh, to win something, especially for Alec, for the amount of work that he's put in. Uh, and a lot of people are behind the, ground, uh, behind the scenes. You know, the whole club. I would love the, the club to win something, and hopefully they will. Uh, and I feel that I'm quite welcome. I would be welcome if I wanted to go back. Uh, but I've not got any hard feelings. While Hearts had been struggling every Saturday in the league, their European form in midweek was a revelation. St. Patrick's of Dublin were first round opponents in the UEFA Cup. Hearts dominated the match throughout, and when the Irish goalkeeper failed to clear an Ian Ferguson cross, the ball was clearly handled on the line. Wayne Foster was given the task of converting the spot kick and made no mistake. Mike Galloway's header from a corner in the same half put the result beyond doubt. It was the first of five European goals for Galloway and the start of a tremendous UEFA run. Real chance shot and this time it's a goal beautifully taken by Kenny Black. The throw in. Chested down and Kenny Black coming in to rifle home left footed. And the famine is over. Poor pass by John McDonald, losing Gary Mackay. He leaves it for Wayne Foster. Must be set up. Mike Galloway. Good finish for the big number five. The ball played deep to the back, and Mike Galloway gets a deserved reward for some excellent attacking play throughout the night. Hearts 2, St. Pat's 0. Bannon and Sanderson, Hearts attack, we need to watch the Austrian defence watching for the offside as Bannon holds it up, angles it across and they're onside, Kid, here it is for Hearts, Mike Galloway goes to the Hearts supporters, the trap has been broken. Mike Galloway, what a goal! Again we see Walter Kidd. This is literally an inch perfect cross and a great goal for Hearts.
Ferguson to Mackay. Galloway. Again, good running by Ferguson. There's David Bannon with a chance there. so far and look at this off the side of the foot and the post Whitaker our side to Galloway tries to knock it down Ferguson that must be a chance it is Galloway He nipped in there, he did all the useful work. He might have got a penalty out of that, but he didn't need to ball it because Galloway just popped it over. 2 0. And this was tenacity on the part of Ferguson, who in the first half showed us a great deal of skill. And Galloway following up all a bit of good teamwork. Ferguson trying to sneak in, there's Galloway. Oh, he lost touch. That's not a bad ball, here's Cahoon with a chance, he scored! Right at the death, Hearts go three up. Just when they look very apprehensive, in the fence, Cahoon comes in there, that is a very intelligent reverse pass. He was onside and this time drilled it in off Petranovic. And that's a goal they thoroughly deserve. Perfectly onside and Cahoon. That goal you've just seen might mean a great deal of money to Hearts. Indeed, Bayern Munich came out of the hat when a quarter-final place was booked, having seen off the Yugoslavs with a 4-2 aggregate win. Six in the wall, showing respect for Ian Ferguson in particular with his shooting power. There's Bannon, Ferguson, scrambled away by Alman. Not very convincing at all from the keeper. Can they break through now? Here's Tosh McKinley with the free kick. Sideways to Ferguson. Brilliantly finished by Ferguson. Hearts take the lead. And you, Ferguson savors the moment. So too do the Time Castle faithful. Well, this was a shot of stunning power from you, Ferguson. We've seen many from him in the past. Alec McDonald with a smile on the face and little wonder. And here Ferguson answering his critics in the best possible fashion. Just enjoy this moment all over again. The short free kick. Just look at the power of that shot. Owen was helpless. Only the net could stop that ball. There by Nagbai, who has got number two on his back, but has been right across the defence and coming forward often, of course. Johnson, uh, no free kick. Oh, it's a fair play by Ogan Teller, the captain, looking for the opening oh, goal. Glorious goal. He eludes his man, gets his balance, and hit with power and precision. And not even the finest goalkeeper in the world could have stopped that. That is class. That's a bit of ball now. John Cahoon on his own. Oh, good play by Cahoon. What a chance for him. And it's missing. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, that could have transformed this game. Look at it. Beautiful little sliding 
run there as he went round his man and then dragging the goalkeeper and angled it agonizingly too much. The heart supporters rose by the way their side is playing at this moment in time. Well, it's not a bad ball, it's off the ball. And how did it stay out? Well, the hearts have been desperately unlucky. I mean, hitting the wood like that at this juncture. Hart showing real character and skill to boot. Well, it looked offside to me, but open on to Reuter in a very good position indeed. Well, got it. Even though we got beat, I think the Bayern Munich game was definitely the big one for us. I mean, it was a, they were playing a quality side, and uh, we got the chance uh, to put our wits against quality players. And I thought the Hearts done really, really well. It was just, I mean, you're talking about two or three inches of the the, ch the shot that John had that hit the post. I mean, that could have went in the back of the net as easy as come out again. Uh, so we learnt a lot, and I thought we done really well against them. For Hearts even to have beaten Bayern here. And to actually win in a practice stadium in Vienna, no Scottish team international or domestic has won in the international stadium in Vienna. And we did that three days after struggling for a draw at Love Street. It was a delight. The club, which had been the butt of so many jokes, which had been up and down to the first division like a yo-yo, which had teetered on the brink of bankruptcy, had at last won the respect and admiration of Europe. The future looked secure in the hands of a talented squad committed to the pursuit of major trophies. Ha! Ah!